Hello, welcome to Sackable, the all-in-one solution to building stunning websites with the WordPress block editor. This video is an in-depth tutorial on how to customize stackable blocks. You will have a deeper understanding of all the customizations and settings that are possible with Stackable. Stackable blocks are divided into three categories, the essential blocks, the special blocks, and the section blocks. Essential blocks are all the necessary blocks you need to help get you started as you build your websites. Special blocks are equipped with a special functionality that will allow you to create distinctive designs. Intersection blocks act as a template to help you build entire sections. Some blocks will be nested in a container or parent block. To customize a specific element within a block, you have to click it to see the styling options for that block, or you could open the list view from the toolbar and select the block from the outline. Some blocks will prompt the layout picker. This is available in some blocks like the hero, feature, feature grid, and card. On the right hand side of the Gutenberg interface, you will see the stackable block settings inside the inspector. In the inspector, there is the block tab, the style tab, the advanced tab. Let's take a look at this mock web page of a company's team members. It includes the hero block with a heading, subtitle, and a bottom separator. Here you will see the cards that include the team members. It has an image, subtitle, text, icon buttons, and we've added some hover animations to the container as well as the icon buttons. Lastly, here's the call to action block which has a heading, subtitle, a regular button, and we've added some scroll animations to it just to draw attention to our CTA. We'll demonstrate how to recreate this mock web page so that you can have a better grasp of how to customize blocks. On a blank page, let's add our page title. If you preview it, the page will be blank since we formatted it to hide the page title. Now let's start with the hero block. We are selecting the default layout in the layout picker. In the toolbar, let's click the leftmost icon to select the parent block and change the block's alignment. You can select align left, center, right, wide width, or full width. Let's select the last option. In the Style tab, let's turn off the container background and turn on the background for the block in the Block tab. Now let's select the gradient style background instead of a solid color. Now we just have to pick the colors for our gradient background. Click on the pencil icon of the Advanced Gradient Color Settings so we can further customize the gradient background. Here we can change the direction of the gradient so that it's vertical. Moving on to the bottom separator, let's choose a curved design. Darken the shadow and preview the block. Looking good! Now let's edit the content of our block. Let's change the heading's alignment to the left, add a margin on the left side, and change the text color. Now let's add our text. Let's check how this looks on the front end. Now we're doing the same to the description text and we're deleting the button.
Let's check how that looks like. Now let's add the team member block. Again, this has various layout variations. You're selecting the default one. Click the leftmost icon on the toolbar to select the parent block. And it's time to add the hover effect. In the block tab, head over to the borders and shadows panel. Click the icon to the right of the shadow or outline option and select hover so we can edit the block style in the hover state. You can change the value by moving the slider or you can simply type it in the text field. Let's preview this on the front end to make sure it's working. Great! Now let's add the inner blocks of the team member block. Click on the image placeholder to add your asset and select it from the media library. Moving on to the heading block or the name, we'll simply type in our content by clicking on the block and typing it in. For the position or text block, let's head over to the cell tab and click the pencil icon to edit the typography. You can change the font family, weight, font transform, style, line height, or letter spacing. For now, let's transform the text to uppercase and make the letter spacing wider. In the typography panel, you can also type or paste your content in the content field instead of inputting it in the block itself. As you can see, the block is getting updated in real time. For the description, we'll leave it as is. Moving on to the social icons or icon button group, we'll be adding a hover effect to make hover state styling more apparent in the button colors panel of the style tab. Now let's add the URL of our icon buttons in the link panel. We can toggle on the option to add this in a new tab, add a link relation, and a link title. Let's do the same for all icons. Now let's test whether the changes appear in the front end. Now let's add the team member block to a column. You can do this by selecting the parent block and clicking on transform to columns or container. Make sure to select the stackable option so we can use stackable design options for our block. Let's click on the list view icon from the toolbar and make sure we're selecting the column and not the parent block. Let's go to the advanced tab so we can add transition effects. Click the transform and transition panel and in the transition duration option, let's type in our value. You could also adjust this by using the slider. Select the transition function in the drop-down menu. And in the transform section, let's make sure we are editing for the hover state. In the translate y option, we'll be adding our value. Again, you could adjust this using the slider. Let's check our front end to make sure it works. Great! Now in the list view, let's select the parent block, columns or container. In the general panel of the style tab, 
you will see the columns option. There is a copy icon adjacent to it. When disabled, all the new columns will just be blank. On the other hand, if this is enabled, all the contents and design settings from the first column will be copied. Let's enable this so we won't have to redo or copy and paste the team member block from our first column. Now let's just edit the contents of our new columns. Now we are previewing our page to check whether our new columns inherited the design settings from our first block. Moving on to the call to action, you will be prompted to select a layout once again. For now, we will select the third option, Horizontal 2. Our block will automatically inherit the styles of the layout we selected. On the left are the heading and description, and on the right is the button. Let's select the paired block by clicking on the leftmost icon in the floating toolbar and set the alignment to full width. Like in the hero block, let's turn off the container background in the style tab. And in the block tab, let's turn on the background. Switch the background color from single to gradient select the colors. Now let's adjust the direction of our gradient to make it more cohesive. Scroll further down and you'll see the top separator panel. Let's toggle this on and select the design for our top separator. Now darken our shadow for this and invert our design. Now let's check how this looks like in the front end. For the content of our call to action, change the alignment of our heading and its text color. Type in the content and do the same for the description or text block. We can also adjust the bottom margin of our block by dragging the yellow bar below our block. Now let's select its parent block, the column, head to the alignment panel of the block tab, and select the content and column alignment that we want. For the button, you can add the URL in the link panel of the style tab, or you can simply click on the button itself and the link settings will pop up in a modal. This is also applicable for icon buttons. Select the parent block and adjust the content and column alignment in the alignment panel of the block tab. Finally, let's add a margin to our columns. That's looking great. Let's take a final look at our recreated web page. Again, in this video, we demonstrated various customization options in Stackable, such as editing the typography, customizing hover state styling, and even new features like adding scroll transitions and column linking. We hope you find this guide helpful for your page building journey with Stackable. Thanks for watching. Don't hesitate to reach out to us with any questions you may have. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel for more.